So now that we've identified that our governing documents are antiquated and we'll probably all get sued and go to jail, how exactly do we go about amending them so that doesn't happen? Well, I don't know if we're going to jail, but we definitely might get sued. (laughs) Um, So in order to proceed with amending the CCRs and bylaws, a secret ballot vote of the members is required. And so many associations have experience with this dual envelope procedure, which requires the engagement of an inspector of election. It's the same procedures that are used for an election of directors at the annual meetings. And so we have to go through that same process for the amendment to the governing documents. And in addition, so you've got your secret ballot, your voting instructions, dual envelope. And we also have to send out the text of the proposed amendment along with that voting package. CCNRs and bylaws will, will require, they'll set forth the minimum approval requirement. So most of the time it's going to be, you know, a majority or 51% of the members vote in favor to approve. We'll also see a supermajority requirement, so that's 67, 75% of the members required to vote yes in order to approve the document. But we also might see the requirement that lender approval must be obtained before the governing documents become effective. Lender approval, typically you'll see provisions that state written lender approval is required. And so because lenders are not members of the association, the protocols are not as stringent and it would not require a, a secret ballot process unless the governing documents specifically call for that. Rather, we would only need to obtain the written approval of the lenders. And there's case law that suggests that the failure of a lender to respond timely if the request is sent by certified mail would be deemed approval. So the failure of the lender to respond within a stated time frame um, is deemed approval. So it's not necessarily a bar to obtaining a successful vote on the document, but it is another hoop that the association would need to jump through in order to finalize the document. And that certainly seems like uh, something you'd want to take out of the restated documents, right? Absolutely, yes, yes. So in the event lender approval is required, one provision I like to include is in order to prevent lenders from voting against the proposal would be to require the approval of eligible lenders to put the duty on the lenders to submit a request to the association in writing to be on that list of eligible lenders, then requiring the board to seek approval from those specific lenders rather than all lenders. Because once lender approval is required, that means the association has to survey the members, request that the members submit their lender information, or if members do not respond to that request, than to research title and find lender information in order to reach out to those lenders. So definitely a lengthy process and and should be amended out of the governing documents. That does sound like a lengthy and time-consuming process. So approximately how long does it usually take to restate documents as far as notifying the lenders, the secret ballots, getting it all approved and voted? So we typically recommend going through the secret balloting process first, because as we'll discuss soon, you might experience some voter apathy and might even get some no votes and not be able to move forward with the amendment until you proceed with certain measures. And so I would typically recommend proceeding with the secret ballot vote first. That means send the ballots out, wait 30 days and have the meeting to vote. So if and when the members vote in favor of the amendment and the amendment passes, by the members, then the next step would be lender approval. So sending out that written notice to lenders, waiting 30 days, lenders fail to respond or otherwise vote in favor, then you can proceed with finalizing the documents with notarized signatures and then sending to the county recorder's office for recordation. And then once they're recorded, they're then sent out and distributed to the membership and that's when they become effective. So it's not until you actually record the documents after receiving all the approvals and then send them out to the the membership is when they're effective. And that's for CCNRs. Like I stated before, bylaws do not need to be recorded, but they do need to be sent out to the members after approval. 